Hey what's up everyone and today I'll be looking at the new Figma number 158 from one of the most popular anime of 2012, Sword Art Online, and this is the beater himself, Kirito. I tried to get this the day after release in Akiba and you wouldn't believe how hard it was. It was sold out everywhere and I mean everywhere. It became so rare so fast that I saw one store selling it for over 9,000 yen, almost three times its retail price, but thankfully I got it for half of that. So now I'm definitely pre-ordering Figma figures from now on. Now let's see if it was worth it. First a quick look around the box. The standard Figma box looking awesome in Sword Art Online colors. An image on the figure on every side so you can see what it is no matter what way you stack it. On the back we get a good idea of what's in the box, accessories, extra faces, and we get a feeling for the types of poses we can expect to achieve. Now let's bust it open. As usual, the backdrop from inside the box includes this section here which can be removed and attached to a DI stage, which is sold separately. A quick eyeball of the contents and we can see we have the figure itself, two extra faces as well as the default face, Kirito's dual swords and their scabbards, and around the back, the awesome huge effect parts for attaching to his swords. In the bottom, the base and instructions. Now let's take a closer look at everything inside. Here we have the list of what's included with the figure. Open that up and there's the assembly instructions. These are the parts for attaching the scabbards to his back, the one on top for the jewel blades, and the one on the bottom for just attaching the scabbard of the elucidator. Over here on the second page are the slash effect parts, the darker one for the elucidator, and the lighter one for the dark repulsor. Inside this plastic we have the figma stand, the rack of alternate hands, and the extra attachment for the stand. This design is probably designed not to get in the way of the scabbards. And now for a quick look at the figure itself. An awesome figure yet again from Max Factory who never failed to impress. The head looks really nice, the sculpt of the hair is great and the facial features are very sharp and detailed. Kirito is quite a simple character design, but Max Factory managed to make this figure look awesome regardless due to their awesome attention to detail and ability to produce some of the best figures in this scale range. They also managed to blend the joints in quite well on this figure, and I'm especially impressed with those found here on the jacket, which as you can see can barely be seen at all and it always looks great no matter what the angle or how you bend these. Very impressive. Another great looking Figma once again from Max Factory. Now a look at the accessories. First up a sword forged from Dragon Poop, the Dark Repulsor. The colour is nice and the details look great. And next the second of Kirito's jewel swords, the Elucidator. Doesn't quite stand out as much as the Dark Repulsor, but a great looking sword nonetheless. As well as these, a scabbard for both the Dark Repulsor and the Elucidator. Also included are parts for attaching the scabbards to Kirito's back. And by far the biggest accessories that come with this figure, the slashing effect parts. Light blue for the Dark Repulsor and dark blue for the Elucidator. Both scabbards are fully functional and the swords can be inserted and removed quite easily. Connecting them into the parts for securing the scabbard to his back is quite simple. There's just the Elucidator on its own. To attach both swords, just slide the elucidator into the outer part and the dark repulsor into the inner one. And you have Kirito's dual blades and he'll be ready to use Nitoryu. I have one minor concern with the scabbards however. The sword shows a little bit of wear straight out of the box and this might worsen with constant use. The figure comes with three pairs of alternate hands as well as the default pair. Two extended finger open palmed hands two sword holding hands that hold the sword at roughly 90 degrees from his arms, and another pair of sword holding hands that are at a sharper, more extended angle. And last up, the default set of fists. In the face department, we have two alternate faces and the default face. The default face is a smiling, pleasant expression. Face number two is a sad or apologetic face. And face number 3, and my personal favourite of the bunch, an open mouthed angry face with some really nice minute detail on the upper teeth. It looks great. Kirito is a very broody character, so I would have liked to see a broody scowl thrown in there as well. But this is a nice selection anyhow. As always, changing the face is a piece of cake. Just remove the front of the hair, pop off the face, and attach the face of your choice. I'm going for the sad face first, for a confused, apologetic Kirito because he's probably put his foot in it again, as usual. Next, the angry, shouting face, which just looks amazing. I'll say it again, my favourite of the bunch for sure. Swapping out hands is even easier than the faces, and just involves popping out this one, and sticking the next one in like this. 
The parts for holding the scabbards attach into the upper hole on a figure's back. There's the single scabbard, and the dual scabbards, and the dual scabbards with the dark repulsor and the elucidator. And last up are the slash effect parts, which just slide easily onto the swords. There's the dark repulsor, and there's the elucidator. These parts are very heavy and I do worry about the swords breaking over time. The point where the handle is joined to the rest of the sword looks quite weak, and it's the same on both swords, so make sure to take care when handling them. Now onto the articulation. The side to side movement of the head is great. Forward movement is also great, but the movement to the rear is quite limited. The movement of the arm all the way up and down, it has 360 degree rotation, and at the elbow joint, it can bend up to around 45 degrees. Here's full extension of the hand, full flexion of the hand. So far, I'm impressed. Quite a nice bit of movement at the waist, but he won't be licking his knees anytime soon. Leg movement all the way up, all the way back down, and all the way out to the side. The bend at the knee is similar to that of the arm, around 45 degrees again. There's an impressive amount of upwards and downwards movement at the foot. And let's have a look at that awesome coat one more time. And let's see how Kirito looks in some action poses. Lastly, I'll be looking at quality. For the most part, this figure is of amazing quality, but there are some sections where the paint is a bit messy. There are also some mole lines here and there, especially on the front of the boots. And the wrists and the arms just aren't strong enough to support the heavy effect parts at times, and make some poses impossible when they're attached. Max Factory really know how to make a figure, and the Figma line always delivers. This figure of Kirito looks awesome, has great selection of accessories, and besides some limited articulation at the waist, is a very poseable figure. As always, the quality is top notch. The paint can be a bit messy in spots, but this will vary from figure to figure, so it can't really be held against it. Also, the effect parts for the swords can be a bit heavy, but this really isn't too big of an issue. If you're a fan of sword art online, and even if you're not but just like the look of this figure, I would definitely recommend picking it up while it lasts. So until next time, thank you for watching.